Understanding how to create pulses of stiffness, utilizing and facilitating the fascia connective tissue system, the nervous system to create pulses of stiffness. That is the essence of athletic performance. Hi, my name is Bill Parisi. I'm the founder of the Parisi Speed School. We started back in 1992. We've been in business. I've been a coach for now 30 plus years. We've trained over a million athletes. Uh, we put hundreds of guys in the NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA, all different types of pro athletes. But our focus has been the youth and high school athlete. So ankle stiffness, I think, is really a missing link in uh, pulling more performance out of athletes. I feel that we spent a lot of time, you know, our industry talking about core strength, squat, you know, uh, you know, all the traditional um, components of, of athletic training. And, you know, I think we have uh, taken the, the sagittal plane lifting, squat, deadlift, bench. We've taken it. We've overplayed it. I think core training to a degree, we've overplayed. Um, I think there's other areas to pull performance out of, and ankle stiffness is a key, key element. And ankle stiffness, I think, needs to be trained. And you train ankle stiffness by not just doing calf raises, right, but putting your athlete in, a, in an athletic position, a bent knee position, uh, under load, isometric load, and then dynamic load, like on and off platforms in a lunge, in a power lunge position, landing on the balls of the foot, sticking that position, training the body to co-contract, uh, doing different types of ankle stabilization exercises. So I think it's important to be have a bent knee so you get more soleus involved, right? Because when the knee is straight, you're gonna it's gonna be more gastroc. When you have a bent knee and you're training the, the ankle, you're gonna get more soleus. Soleus is gonna be the primary uh, uh, stabilizer along with all the other muscles. But the key is, is to create dynamic stiffness uh, in an athletic position, going on and off small obstacles, a small, small platform uh, in many ways, and then also loading the system through isometric loading at the ankle joint, again with a bent knee and a straight knee and putting more focus and attention to training the ankle complex for stiffness. We're not training for big calves. We're not training for traditional isotonic strength. We're training for dynamic stiffness to be super stiff in milliseconds and to be able to relax. That is muscle pulsing. That is co-contraction skill. That, that's more of a skill. So muscle pulsing in, in terms of co-contractions and trying to get massive amounts of stiffness in short periods of time, a tenth of a second, is more of a skill than strength. It's important because when we sprint and when we run, we want to yield, we want to limit our, our yielding time. So when you run and jump, everyone is going to yield, we're going to absorb. But how much we absorb, you know, that yielding really, one, depends on the athlete, what are their drivers, right? Are they more of a muscular athlete driver? If they're more of a muscular driver, they're going to get a little bit more yield, right? If they're more of an elastic athlete, they're gonna get a little less yield. So everyone's gonna yield differently. But for the most part, we wanna minimize yielding, right? So when we run, we don't wanna be mushy and we don't wanna be doughy and, we, and we, we're loose, right? So when you sprint, you wanna, you wanna be a strong spring. So a good analogy is if you have a, uh, you know, a 1980 you know, Chevy and it's old and it's a clunker and you're going over railroad tracks, you're gonna feel like you're in a boat. You know, that car is yielding a lot, you know, it's like this. But now I have a, you know, a brand new 2023, you know, Chevy pickup, extra leaf springs, and that thing's tight. You over railroad tracks, well, anything in the back, if it's not locked down, it's popping out. That's a tight spring. We want our body to be a, a really strong, tight spring. So we need to yield, but it's gotta be a short, dynamic, strong yield. And I think that's important to understand uh, when we train athletes, we're trying to minimize yielding uh, but also, we don't want to minimize so much where we don't get any recoil. So there's a happy medium. I mean, people say, be quick off the ground, be quick off the ground, be quick off the ground. But you don't want to be so quick where you're, you're like hitting it and you're getting no recoil. So you have to look at that as you, as you assess your athlete sprinting, right? So, so a lot of times, we do want to minimize ground contact time. A lot of times, athletes are yielding too much. But sometimes, athletes, especially in acceleration, they, they, they're, they're getting off the ground too fast. They're not getting enough dry phase in their acceleration. So it depends on the race, the athlete, the, the skill you're addressing, top speed, change of direction, multi-directional speed or, or acceleration. You know, they all play a different role.